Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to change the background color of an image using GIMP 2.10. Okay, so on my desktop, I've got this folder and inside this folder, I've got this one image which I downloaded from Pixabay. I'll put a link to that in the YouTube description. Let's go ahead and open up GIMP software and we'll go to File, New and we'll set the resolution to 1920 by 1080. Let's make sure it's set to Landscape. Click this button here. We'll click Advanced and set it to 72 DPI, 72 here and we'll fill it with transparency let's go ahead and click ok so we've got a blank canvas now and we'll go back to our folder and drag and drop the image into GIMP software okay so the image inside GIMP is quite large so we want to click on the move tool for a minute and let's just click on the image and hold down the control key and use the mouse wheel to zoom out and you can use the middle mouse button to pan the canvas around on the screen we want to resize this let's go ahead and hold down on the left mouse button and select the scale tool here scale or you can press shift and s now what you can do is hold down the alt key and use your mouse wheel um, in fact click on the image first and then you can hold down the alt key and use the mouse wheel to change the opacity here before i was using the opacity tool over here but if you hold down the alt key and use your mouse wheel you can reduce or increase the opacity so we want to set it to something like around 70 percent and the reason why we're doing that is when we resize we can see the the canvas size in the background here so when we click on the handles in the side uh, we can scale it, we can click on this little middle square to position it, we can hold down the control key and use the mouse wheel to zoom in, right? and we can hold down the alt key and use the mouse wheel to reduce or increase the opacity. So roughly this sort of size here is going to be pretty good for us, I think we'll make it slightly smaller, right? and this is our canvas size and this is going to be the size of the image, I think that's going to be okay. So let's hold down the alt key, use the mouse wheel, or just drag here all the way back up to 100% and click scale. So this is the size of our image and we want to get rid of this pink background. So the tutorial today is I've chosen this particular I've chosen this particular image because it's got a nice clean flat colored background. So the technique we use today is really suitable where you've got quite a strong contrast in image with a really really simple flat background color. We'll look at some other techniques of removing backgrounds and changing background colors for other types of images but today we're looking at a very simple type of image so you learn the techniques and then you can apply them to other types of images as well so let's hold down the control key and zoom in a little bit we can use the middle mouse button to pan our canvas let's click on the move tool for the moment so normally when i'm working in gimp and if i'm not using any of the tools my default tool is the move tool i always click that move tool uh, that's kind of my default go-to tool when i'm not doing anything let's go to file save as let's save our work we'll go to my desktop let's click in this folder and let's just call this uh, edit 01 so we save our GIMP file let's just save this so the first thing we want to do is really crop this image we've got all of this content above and below and we really just want to crop around this picture so let's use the crop tool let's click on the crop tool let's make sure we turn off turn off expand from center make sure that's turned off and pretty much everything in here you can leave as default right it's pretty good the, these settings that you can see here then we're just going to hold down on the left mouse button and drag around the image but make sure there's a nice gap around the top uh, and the sides so you want a decent gap something like this so you can see like there's quite a big gap around the sides that's what you want something like this maybe we'll stretch it let's do that again so you want quite a large gap you can actually click in the corners to expand and move this right so you can just resize it just make sure there's a nice gap around the sides and then hit the enter key so that will crop that image down to this particular size and we've got rid of most of this pink background so really what we want to do now is add a different background but before we do that we just want to remove this pink background from this image so let's use the magic wand tool we looked at that tool in my previous tutorial so we'll click on the magic wand tool we'll set the feathering uh we'll turn the feathering on and anti alias on and we'll set the feathering radius to five uh pixel and we set the threshold to around 12 will be fine something like around 11 or 12 let's click make sure you click on this top layer and then click in the pink background click there and you can go to edit cut and that will remove most of the background it's still a slight problem so let's go to select none and if we click on the background you may just be able to see this but it's still a uh, quite a faint pink uh, outline so let's resolve that in a moment let's just fill the background color so i'm going to click on this background go to the paint bucket tool so i'll hold down the left mouse button click on the paint bucket tool i'm going to select a color in here 
maybe we'll maybe we'll stick with this blue color so i'm looking for like this blue color let's click ok and make sure the opacity is set all the way up to 100 here yeah your opacity should be set to uh, a 100 value and we'll just go ahead and click on the background layer and and fill it in with the bucket tool just left click here now you can see that pink outline that we need to get rid of so there's a few different ways to remove that we could crop it again or we can just use the eraser tool so let's click on that top image go to the eraser tool and all we'll do is just draw around this square box right this square dotted line just hold down the left mouse button and drag all the way around and we can just double check it's all gone so let's just do that then we'll click on the background and now you can see that yellow box uh, or that pink line box is removed okay so we've got a new background color we've got the camera there this is some sort of camera shape uh, or product and what else can we do with this image now how else can we change it manipulate it do some other things with it so let's click on this background let's duplicate the layer let's click this uh, button here to make a duplicate copy let's just see um it's this one here now let's check which one is the duplicate duplicate is here so we'll click this let's click it a couple of times so we've got three of the blue background let's hide the very bottom one and this second one so we're left with this one that we're working with right these ones are hidden underneath let's click on that background layer let's go to the paint bucket tool and select gradient instead gradient and we can do a gradient now between the foreground color and the background color so it doesn't have to be black but i'm going to leave it black or you can click in here choose a different color like red if you like let's try red to blue and inside of this option here we want to do a uh, foreground to background rgb so we'll click that it's already selected for me and we'll hold down the um, shift key the, the control key actually and we can draw the straight line by holding down the control key we constrain how this um how this uh this gradient is going to work right in in terms of its um it's the way this line moves you can constrain the line otherwise if you let go of it you can just move it however you want so you can make some really nice sort of patterns and colors uh, you can change this as well so you can select something like this maybe you like this sort of style i think that looks pretty good uh, and then we can just go ahead and click on the move tool and that will confirm that so we've got one sort of gradient color here let's hide that one and click on this one and enable it and we can go back to our gradient tool this time i'm going to pick, pick a black color and we're going to do blue to black and we'll click on the gradient tool again uh hold down the shift key the uh, sorry the control key and i'm going to do a gradient like to about here i think that look pretty good around this sort of size right and we'll click back on our move tool and now we've got this sort of gradient so you can see how you can quickly change the backgrounds right we've got this colored version we just got a normal version you can go and experiment what i suggest you do is click on the gradient tool click on this drop down and you've got some pre-made ones in here as well so you can do like a, a default sort of silver you've got deep blue you've got all these ones that are made for you so you don't even have to think about it they've made loads of different um color ranges hit in here for you so you've got like orange yellow to orange for example so you just click on that yellow to orange go ahead and click on this layer make a duplicate copy hide the one below let's just drag this to the top so we've got this new copy we can then just left click and then hold down the control key and we can make like a nice orange gradient in fact i like this one the most so let's click on the move tool what else can we do we can go ahead and click on this camera and duplicate the layer let's duplicate it a couple of times and we'll hide these bottom two so we've got this top one enabled and we'll click on that and go to the filter let's go to the blur and we we'll do a gaussian blur let's see in fact we have to do this slightly differently we have to enable two layers right so we're going to retain the top layer as it is and we'll click on the one below it then we'll go to filter blur and gaussian blur and then we can draw out a gaussian blur something like this let's say around this size and we'll click ok now you've got this nice sort of glow effect around the camera you can't see it too well on this particular color background but if we were to hide this one and enable the black one and the blue one now you can see that blur effect right around the camera you can probably see it quite well on this one as well so you can now go and play around with the images all, we, all we've really done here to be fair on this particular image all we've done is created two layers we've retained the top layer and our blur is sitting behind it can you see on this layer the blur you can go and experiment with that blur you don't have to use that particular gaussian blur you can enable this one 
really should retain an original copy we've got the original one at the top so that's fine but try and retain your original copies because a lot of things you do in GIMP are destructive so as soon as you apply an effect to it that effect is applied pretty much for good unless you control Z or undo it at that point in time so I like to retain lots of copies on my original image and then manipulate them many many times so you can go ahead and maybe make some more copies and just hide the ones right that you're not using we can click on this one drag it up we can go to the uh, let's see the filter we can go back to the blur you can do like a so circle motion blur let's see what happens now right let's just drag this out a bit let's see if we can get this to work you can change the angle so that's taking quite a long time for my computer to render it out <clears throat> But here, this, this sort of angle looks pretty good. We'll click OK. We can hide this one and go to that black layer. Right, then you've got this sort of motion blur of this camera. So you can go and experiment. For me, it's down for you to now go and experiment, really. I'm just going to leave it on, like, the glow. And I think I kind of like the orange color and maybe leave that glow there. Probably without the glow, actually. Looks quite nice, just clean like that. Or with the glow, this one. And if I'm going to have that glow, I'll probably use the... Uh, this darker background right let's go to file save let's go to file export and we'll export this as a jpeg file so we click here let's go to jpeg click export we can leave it at night percent compression let's click export and i'm going to export the orange one as well so we just disable some layers go to file export as again and this time we'll save it as version 2 and we'll click export and then save so let's go ahead and close down GIMP we'll save uh, let's go to cancel let's go to file save first so we save our GIMP work all of our layers and everything we can close this so we started off with this picture we had a pink background we managed to rotate that well, we didn't rotate it we removed the background and put in a completely different color and then we did this version where we've got this sort of glow effect around the edge and you can go and experiment with that that's a good way to use GIMP to remove a background color replace it with a new color and then I've just given you a few little extras uh, in terms of uh, you know adding some basic sort of effects like glows and stuff like that so I'll leave you to go and experiment with that I hope you find this tutorial useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial